And let's talk about Intuitive Surgical. They reported earnings this week. We don't talk about these very much on this show, and there's a good reason for that, because neither of us owns them. But their stock was up, and I think both of us think they're a very good company. So let's just talk about them a little bit then. What they do is make surgery robotic uh, equipment and uh, bits that go onto equipment. So components and uh, replacement parts and software, I guess, as well along the way. And it's a fairly standard sort of razors and blades model, I think, for hospitals. By our system, which is by far the best thing, you can do minimally invasive surgery incredibly well. Uh, from what I've heard, and I am not an expert in this field at all, it's a really great piece of kit. Uh, you can sell kind of add-on modules and so on uh, fairly well to get yourself a nice business model. Everyone thinks very highly of it. Their revenue came in at $1.655 billion, which was up about 11%. Their EPS came in at $0.90, cents, which was down by about 10%. Uh, procedure growth was off the charts apparently that people are using this stuff more and that's good news for intuitive surgical the basic idea being that look the more they use it the more stuff wears out the more they have to replace it the more money you make um, simple as and the management was surprised at the amount of procedures that were going on um, but okay that's a kind of good and encouraging thing uh, EPS was down mostly because of some manufacturing issues and some high inventory levels I think wearing off um, but overall a very, very strong company. The Motley Fool love this uh, stock quite a bit. I can't get there on price uh, with this, but here's the way I think about this. It's not strictly a defensive stock, um, or it's not listed as a defensive stock. I think of it as one, because I think this is a stock with a very obvious future, a stock that's likely to experience reasonably steady demand. Nothing is ever entirely steady, um, but I think this is going to go in a highly predictable kind of way. Uh, it's a PE of 81 trailing or 41 forward. That's not cheap by anyone's standards. That wasn't cheap two years ago uh, when everything was kind of uncheap. So I feel like you're probably going to get a reasonably low return from this, but what you are very likely to get is a return uh, from this. I don't see this getting disrupted in any interesting fashion, and there's a big price to be paid for that lack of disruption. The kind of uh, Obviously, it's a growth story, and the Motley Fool keep calling it a big growth story, um, the the kind of 10-year Kager on this is only about 10% for revenues, and earnings per share Kager is only about 9% to last year. It actually slipped off over the last uh, sort of 12 months or so. So I was I went back a year and over the previous sort of nine to then, it was only about 9%. That's quite a lot for 80 or 40 times earnings, but I guess what you are really buying predictability if you want to go for that kind of thing. I mean, for me, this is uh, this is the opposite of growth pulled forward. They had demand held back, and this is basically um, that demand returning back to normal. I think during COVID, uh, <clears throat> especially in the sort of like early to mid stages, pretty much all procedures were cancelled, Steve. So anything that uh, th that would have used an intuitive surgical product uh, wasn't getting done. And now what we're seeing is obviously you can't just stop doing procedures for a couple of years. People need these procedures, and now all of the procedures you would have had to have done anyway, plus two years back, has meant that there's a hell of a lot of more procedures to do in this year, which has meant that people need more machines, which has meant that they've bought more from Intuitive Surgical. So, uh, essentially, that's I don't think we're in some kind of inflection point here, Steve, where we're going to see 26% growth from this point onwards. I think that'll probably turn back to maybe single digits to maybe, maybe low double digits. But... Uh, it's an attractive looking business, Steve, and it's kind of one of those that, I mean, we've been speaking about this stock for three years now, I would imagine, and perhaps if we just held our nose and bought it there, um, we would be looking at uh, a relative valuation, a relative valuation on cost that we would be happy with, and I think that would have been easier to, to have done three years ago uh, than it would have been today. I think it looks a little bit like that might be harder to recoup. Yeah, I think this is the kind of stock that a few... In many ways, the business will let you sleep well at night. Uh, I don't think anything bad is going to happen to this business. Its balance sheet is, as far as I can tell, basically rock solid. Uh, its share count goes, go, goes up and down a little bit. There's not a massively obvious return in terms of a buyback or anything like that. They have bought back at times. They have printed at times. A question of whether you want them buying back at this rate. I don't see them paying a dividend particularly anytime soon either. They've still got scaling to do. That does kind of lead you to wonder, okay, at around 80 times earnings, this better grow because I need to see a return from somewhere. But you are unlikely to, I think, ever get disrupted or regulated out or anything like that. I think you're pretty well protected in here and this is a strong business. Comes at a hell of a price. Um, 
as stock wise it sort of looks a bit like Costco doesn't it it's never cheap um by any there's no real arguments to be made that the thing is cheap I think at any point even Charlie Munger thinks with that stock it's not cheap but if I had to I'd probably go for it uh, I could see someone saying that about intuitive surgical uh, this is not cheap at all but okay maybe maybe uh, if you wanted to go for sort of 30 years out you could see that working and it depends a bit on whether you thought you had any better ideas yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I don't see anything coming along to to disrupt it. Uh, and if if they did, I, I I almost think Intuitive Surgical is is still pretty small, or at least small enough that it could get an acquisition through on on any kind of new technology that threatens its products. So, uh, yeah, I don't see I don't see any issue with it whatsoever. I think I just think it's price, Steve. I, I, I uh, would be interested to see if anyone's buying it at home, uh, but mm. it's it's not one that I'll be making a rush to purchase. I think of intuitive surgical as the ASML of um, surgery devices, or if you prefer, I think of ASML as the intuitive surgical of chip making equipment. 